Lord in me. Tell your neighbor, we're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> and I know, I know some of you guys keep your purse close and your wallet safe. <laughs> like I shared, I'm not asking for everything. In the Bible, we have we have principles in the scriptures. How many know we got principles in the scriptures? And it's very imperative that we go according to what's written, not what's comfortable. Because if you do what's written, then you will have a, a certain level of comfortability. And then you'll be able to honor the Lord in everything. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 48, 17 to 18 first. Isaiah 8, uh, 48, verses 17 to 18. See, I just got principles this morning. I did a lot of the preaching in the first tape. And then I did some subliminal teaching, which we took some a lot of scriptures. It was, it was high level, high level scriptures. We're going to have some scriptures. We're going to make some thoughts. And then, uh, I don't know where you're going to end up. Uh, but I made my mind. I'm going to follow, I'm going to stay true to the script. And I want to stay true to the word because it's not only for me, it's for my seed seed. Isaiah 48, 17, 18. I, didn't, I, didn't, I need your eyes, man. I, I left my glasses. Okay. Go ahead. Thus says, thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. What does that say to you this morning? In order to who? Prophet, we have to follow him. He's continually teaching. Continual teaching. So that it lets me know that if I'm going to be prosperous, what I need to do? Follow the plan. Tell you never follow the plan. Follow the plan. That's what I've been trying to do the last couple of teachings. Show you what the plan is all about. Continue. Oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Ah, who wants some peace? Yeah. All right. I, I, knew, I knew everybody in the village would raise their hand. <laughs> Nothing like shalom. Nothing like a made up mind. Nothing like having blissful uh, home and, and family mm -hmm. and, and life. That reflects the nature of Christ. I mean, no, he's a prince of peace. Amen. Therefore, he should rule in the midst of us, huh? Amen. I mean, no, you have good peace when your bills are paid. Amen. Amen. Make you want to shout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not only having your bills paid, but having uh, uh, increase in, in, in your income. In other words, not being in a box. Mm -hmm. Having your needs met, yeah. that brings peace, don't it? Yeah. One of the statements we made, we said that we cannot lower the, the level of expectation by our experiences. Mm -hmm. But we have to raise the reality of God's word. Right. So you have a choice. Mm -hmm. Through these two teachings and the third one today, you have to make up your mind. Are you going to lower your expectations or are you going to raise it to the level of God's word? Right. <laughs> are you going to lower your expectation or are you going to raise it to what? The reality of God's word. Third John 1 and 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. He said he wants us to prosper, right? Yes. Prosper in our health. And then prosper in our soul. That ain't a trick question. Y'all, it's in your Bible. Your soul. Everybody always like, be on the edge. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, stay true to the script. <laughs> so he said, he said, John was saying, above all things, I want you to prosper in your health, but it'll never take place until you prosper in your soul. Your mind and your will and your emotions have to prosper. And the only true prosperity you're going to have in your soul is according to what the scriptures declare. Right? We said that that word prosper is you do. It means to grant a prosperous and expeditious journey. It means to lead by a direct and easy way. It means to prosper on one's journey. That's why it's very important that we allow the Spirit of God, get in a relationship with the Spirit of God so he can teach us and impart to us and train us what belongs to us. Uh, we don't want to keep up with the Joneses. I'd rather be a 30-fold, 100-folder than a 60-fold, 30-fold. In other words, I want to maximize my lot in life. 
I may not have the best of everything, but I want to have the best of what belongs to me. Amen. So you can't measure your prosperity by the house you have, or necessarily by your bank account. Your environment determines your prosperity. Your environment determines your prosperity. I can't look out from my house and look on somebody else's and see if the grass is greener and, and try to determine I want what they have because that's the spirit of covetousness. I want to be able to have enough that I can maximize my journey in the earth. I don't want to walk in deficit. I don't want to walk in lack. But it takes management. You have to manage what God has committed and trusted to you. Management Proper management brings increase. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote something a long time ago. Income seldom exceeds your personal development. I'm going to say it again. Income seldom exceeds your personal development. Very, very seldom you're going to find a millionaire that never finished school. It's probably a low percentage. Yes. But there is something in us that attracts um, income and revenue. And God is a reward of them that diligently, he's diligently seek him. We understand that. And, and I think sometimes we, we pick up this monastic, which means become a monk mentality that we don't need resources. That we don't need money. That we don't need income. We don't need revenue. You may not need it. <laughs> Oh, but your generation yes. needs it. Yes. Your, your children yes. need it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, Bills need it too. Comedy, and Icor, they know them first name. They need it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if, the, if you don't mature, if you don't develop an internal, you see, it has to be something internally. Yeah. And see, we get lazy spiritually and we don't want to educate ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you might have to invest in books. Yeah. You may have to go to uh, curriculums. You may have to go to uh, trainings, mm -hmm. uh, seminars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. You may have to come out of your box, come out of your comfort zone. You may have to reconnect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You may have to cut off some friends. Because yeah. I'm here to tell you, your friends will determine your destiny. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Amen. They, they will. I got some friends. I love them. I love them dearly. I love them from afar. You know, yeah, right. I love them when I see them in Walmart. I love them when I see them in Church's Chicken. I, you know, but there's just some places I tend to go that they're not going. And, and I can see it. They still stuck. They still doing the same things. They, I mean, some of the stuff they've been doing when I was in high school. In college. You know what I'm saying? I don't, we don't live basically twice. If you're 50, you don't, you don't live twice. <laughs> I ain't got time for frivolous and foolish stuff. So you have to be careful to monitor yourself. And see, that's we, we think poverty mindset says control is bondage. You know, it's not saying, well, I don't want... You ever heard it? And then I, I, let me just throw this in there. Some folks say, "Well, you came in the world with it, and you, when you leave, you're not gonna take it with you." Oh, uh, thanks for that thought. So, in between you getting it and leaving, what you gonna do? With it? That's a sorry person. They don't understand the impact they're supposed to have in their generation. God placed you in a family for a reason. Yes. 